All right, welcome to another episode. Excuse my um, croaky voice, I'm a bit sick, but this is the time I had to record this one, so we're going to crack on. And you're going to want to stick around for this one, particularly if you own an FS7. The parts discussed in this episode are going to be really useful for people uh, who use FS7 cameras. So in this episode, I'm going to be going through the top plate, the bottom plate, and the um, V-mount back plate uh, that I designed for the FS7 to go along with the small rig U-shaped metal top plate. And I'm also going to be providing some links so people can download and print these themselves. So how did this all start off? Um, it started off by me wanting more attachment points for quick release plate um, screw holes at the bottom of the camera. The FS7 from stock has a quarter 20 and a 3 8 16 uh, thread mount at the bottom for quick release plates. But I noticed that uh, with the very long lenses I use um, that the weight of the lens um, was actually tilting and flexing the body a bit. So I wanted a way to have more mounting points at the bottom of the camera. So that's why I designed the bottom plate. And additionally, I also wanted a way to fill in the middle section of the top plate of the FS7. And that was very easily done. Um, and because it was so easily done, I then uh, continued on with that design and connected the top and bottom plates uh, with some carbon fiber rods and made a V-mount back for the FS7 as well. It was just a bit of a unfortunate coincidence or happy coincidence with the design that my previous V-mount back for the FS7 um, that was like an off-the-shelf V-mount back um, had died uh, soon before I was actually looking to design this. So I was uh, motivated to make a new V-mount back uh, with some very basic parts that I had. So I had some 15 millimeter rods and I had a uh, blank V-mount plate. Uh, so yeah, 3D printing to combine the top plate, the bottom plate and that V-mount back um, all together and to the camera and connecting them all with that V-mount back plate uh, and the carbon fiber rods uh, made the whole uh, top plate and uh, bottom plate uh, significantly more rigid as they sort of support each other. So despite them being made out of plastic, um, they're yeah plenty strong to hold heavy batteries and they have metal uh, brass thread inserts in the plastic uh, so that you can screw in and screw out uh, mounting screws in them uh, yeah pretty regularly and not wear out the threads. This was really important as well for my uh, large sliding top handle build. Because the metal top plate I had, uh, the small rig metal U-shaped top plate I had, didn't have any mounting threads uh, down the length of the camera through the middle section of the camera, since it was the U-shaped design. And I couldn't buy the center section of it anymore as it was discontinued. So I did need to fill that center section so I had places where I could bolt uh, the very large top handle, um, at least one bolt into that. And then the other bolt into the aluminium uh, part of the top plate so that I've got uh, one really secure bit in the aluminium of the top plate and then another thread into the um, 3D printed part which is actually really really strong. So here you can see a few pictures. Um, I took photos of the FS7 um, and sort of scrib printed them off and scribbled over them with a pen to sort of lay out my basic design. And it of course changed as I was going through. And then I used some <laughs> different colored green and whatever else uh, cheap filament I had odds and ends of lying around and uh, printed off a bunch of really rough drafts really fast uh, so they're not very good print quality but um, it was more for sizing and 
fitment, um, as particularly the bottom plate, was a bit of a tricky one with that curve uh, at the bottom of the FS7 where the original really thin rubber shoulder pad is. Removing that shoulder pad and, and putting this complex curved uh, 3D printed part in, um, that was a tricky one to prototype. So yeah, just using some off cuts of filament that was not going to be used for anything else um, was, yeah, it was useful to use up those dribs and drabs. And then I came to uh, my first working copy, um, which, yeah, worked really well. Um, and I used it like that actually for a few months um, and yeah, it worked really well. No complaints there. I only printed it out at that, I only printed everything at that stage out of PLA, uh, which is not ideal for summer conditions in Australia. Um, it'll warp over time and that sort of thing. So um, this was sort of relegated to just general fitment testing and um, I didn't have much time to rebuild it at that point out of a different material. And then eventually when I um, was really happy with it and um, was going to like sort of make it a permanent fixture on the camera, I printed it out of PETG, uh, which has a higher temperature rating. I could have done it out of polycarbonate or, or something else, but I want something slightly flexible um, just to absorb the shocks of anything. Um, I just thought I'd rather it flex and bend rather than snapping. Um, so yeah, PETG apparently has a little bit more flex as well as that uh, reasonable heat tolerance and it's very easy to print. Um, so yeah, that's what I went with for the final parts of this. And I recommend if, if you do get these files uh, to print it out of PETG yourself uh, or another heat um, or a nylon with a higher temperature rating so that um, when you put it in a hot car or if it's in the hot sun, uh, it's not gonna warp when it gets a little warm. So as you can see here, um, this is the FS7 body uh, with the B4 adapter and the B4 support for FS7. And as I turn over the camera, you can see uh, all those extra mounting points in gold. Um, and you can also see the three screws at the back um, that bolt this bottom plate into where the original FS7 shoulder pad would have been. So there's far more uh, screw threads at the bottom of the camera, which is great. You can put more fasteners in uh, so that particularly further back on the camera so that you're not getting the camera tilting up when you're putting weight on the lens. And then you can see on this side, I've also put um, two holes in the top plate and bottom plate on the side of it, on each side of it. Um, so that I can put some extra threaded inserts in there to mount accessories or that sort of thing. And here as I'm undoing these um, back rod clamps, you can see all the um, threaded points um, on the top middle plate. So this top middle plate is the part that I designed um, and it screws in to the stock FS7 uh, center points. Uh, with 3, 8, 16 uh, screws. And then not only those two, but you can see these little grooves at the back here. Um, I put screws in uh, horizontally into the U-shaped small rig top plate. So there's quarter 20 screws going in here as well on each side. So there's four screws attaching the 3D printed um, center top plate part to the u-shaped uh, small rig top plate part and then um, yeah i've got rod clamps at the back which i'm undoing here and they go into threaded points um, in the back of this camera top plate those vertical rods are what hold the carbon fiber rods uh, that hold the v-mount plate on the back this v-mount plate is a very simple design uh, it's basically a V-mount plate um, onto a large flat section of 3D print 
with um, four holes in it with brass threaded inserts in there. And then um, I've got uh, the 15 millimeter holes going through and down uh, through the back of that uh, 3D printed plastic part. And I've split that in half um, and put um, M3 threaded inserts in there as well so that I can then uh, clamp the 3D printed part around those two 15 millimeter carbon fiber rods. That keeps the rods in position and then I can just slot them on the bottom section there which is also mounted to the bottom plate by some uh, quarter 20 threaded inserts as well. Lots of quarter 20 threaded inserts used in these parts but that's good it gives us lots of mounting points and they're really strong. Uh, with the rod clamps off here that shows the back of the camera and yes you can use the v-mount back plate with a BPU battery inside, uh, it all fits around easy enough. Otherwise, um, when I'm not using a BPU battery for hot swapping, I tend to stuff a bunch of uh, cables, DTAP cables and that sort of thing in there um, for cable management in, that, uh, in the battery cavity there. But you can see on the back of the top and bottom plates there um, that I've got those two quarter 20 threaded inserts in each and that's what the rod the vertical rod clamps mount into to um, mount the v-mount back to the fs7 so yeah that's the uh, 3d printed top and bottom plate for the fs7 as well as the v-mount back that goes with these top and bottom plates. I'm really happy with the design and um, I designed it specifically so that it can work in plastic um, and be strong enough. These are not um, high stress parts um, and particularly when they're combined like this and printed in uh, really high infill in a uh, PETG or nylon filament, um, they should stand up really well and I've been using this uh, for probably four or five months now um, as of the publishing of this video and really putting it through its paces and abusing it um, and yeah it's held up really well no signs that it's uh, going to come apart so I'll tease an extra little useful part here for FS7 users uh, this is going to be in the next video but I'll just show you what it is here this is a little uh, modification to the FS7 screen that allows it to uh, mount directly to a long top handle like I've got and uh, swivel and fold into that top handle to make a really compact um, monitor system type thing. Uh, but I'll go more into detail on that in an upcoming video. So I hope you found that interesting. If you've got any questions, go ahead and post them down below. I'll get you some answers. Otherwise, let me know what you think of this. Do you think this is a good idea? It's worked really well for me for ages now. Um, but yeah, I'm really convinced that it was a good design. Uh, but be keen to hear what other people think about um, 3D printing these low use, uh, low stress camera parts. If anybody wants links to the exact uh, heat set inserts and bolts and everything that I use for this and carbon fiber rods. Um, I'll have some links down in the description. They're affiliate links, so if you do happen to buy from them, they won't cost you any more than uh, what the parts are usually worth, but um, I get a small percentage sometimes of those sales if you buy through those links, and that all goes to help support the channel. All right, until next time, I'll see you then.